Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're testing a new compression driver from BNC, the DH350. So this is an ultra compact one inch compression driver. You can just see here uh, how the overall size is. Very, very tiny. Um, this driver uses a 1.4 inch uh, polymer diaphragm with 110 dB sensitivity. And so we're gonna look at the overall test data, subjective listening, on a variety of horns, first starting with the ES2000 by radial horn. And so I did disassemble the compression driver just to kind of look at what it looks like internally. You can see here the polyester diaphragm or polymer, can't quite remember. Uh, here's the motor here, no copper shorting rings. The gap is very, very small on this less than a millimeter voice coil gap. And so here you can see the patented spiral phase plug. So starting with the impedance curve, we can see that there's no real breakup until outside the audible band. And then uh, we have the fundamental resonance at around 1.2 kilohertz. So the three horns here that I test initially is the ES2000, 1200, and 800 by radio. So here's the raw frequency response of the DH350. So we do see a pretty linear response, but there is a dip at around 11 kilohertz and then a sharp incline there with a resonant peak at that 16 kilohertz. And so if we compare that against what's published, uh, this is a much smoother response. We do see the same kind of dip, um, but the actual resonant peak is only at around 4 dB. Uh, but if you look at my test results, if you're, you're looking at around a 5 or 6 dB peak, and then the, the trough there is a little more pronounced um, at around 3 dB there. So a um, little bit different result there against what uh, is published. Um, so we'll get to that in a bit. So mounting it to the larger horn, the ES1200, which has a 1200 hertz cutoff, you can see the response there, driver providing very strong output at around two kilohertz and then it falling off. Changing to the ES800 by radial, uh, we can see here, this is the response. We still get uh, this dip and then a peak here. Now, if we do an overlay of the uh, three different test horns, you can see here the uh, general trend the uh, driver doesn't change too much uh, with the different horns. It kind of just stays kind of in a general. Now I'd say the most optimal uh, would be the ES2000 as it's providing a little more output into the upper treble. Now I decided to just do for the further testing uh, a 3.3 microfarad capacitor uh, on the ES2000. And so that brings the response down to what's shown. Uh, now I conducted off-axis with the ES2000, uh, so you can see it here, uh, off-axis colored polar map. Now burst decay, time domain, we see good burst decay, but we do see that break up there at 16 kilohertz. Uh, and then showing the same result as like a uh, sonogram, you can see here that the driver does have uh, good uh, time domain performance. The same goes for the waterfall. We can see a uh, good result there. Harmonic distortion at the 85 dB, uh, very low distortion, even down uh, lower into the cutoff of the horn. At the 95 dB test signal, extremely low distortion uh, with harmonic, uh, second harmonic just being dominant. Intermodulation distortion is also very low. If we look at the uh, 95 dB test signal, um, we're getting around 60 dB of dynamic range. Uh, the Ged Lee distortion is shown here as well for reference. Um, so the conclusion on this is that the DH350 offers excellent test data that should translate into good overall performance. The uh, diaphragm breakup is outside of the audible band at 14 kilohertz, and the driver provides a very linear response with only a small resonance at 4.7 kilohertz. Um, the harmonic distortion so shows a consistent distribution across the bandwidth with um, the benign second harmonic being predominant. Higher order harmonics are very low um, at 0 0.00557 um, at the 95 dB test signal. Um, so overall, 
the uh, DH350 is a, an exciting new product from BNC. Um, I did do some subjective listening, uh, and so I set up the the DH350 on the ES2000 by radial and um, listened to it in an 8-inch two-way application. Um, so my initial impressions is that the DH350 had good overall clarity, but over extended listening, I found that there was an unusual or unnatural edginess to the upper treble. Uh, the leading edge of high frequency transients had an exaggerated sense of dynamics, which I found to be fat fatiguing over time. Uh, directly comparing it against the RCF uh, CD350 revealed that the CD350 had a more uh, balanced timber. Um, I became concerned about, uh, so these were pre-production samples that were sent to me, that uh, I was concerned about these um, because they didn't really match what has been published. So I decided to request production samples from BNC to confirm the performance. Uh, BNC quickly sent me uh, two more sample drivers and I'll, um, so I'll refer to these production samples as sample one and sample two. So I re-measured the response of the production samples and so to eliminate any variables I decided to measure it on an Azura uh, horn the 1100 and so you can see here this is the response of the sample one on the uh, Azura horn and then here's response to, of sample two and so you can see here that the dip is pretty much gone and then the peak is much less exaggerated on sample two. Um, so if we do an overlay between the two drivers, sample one and sample two, we can see the, the difference there where we have sample two providing um, you know, a more flatter response there. Um, so I decided to compare uh, sample one pre-production with sample two production and this is the overlay and so we can see the production sample is in red and it has a little less aggressive peak there at the 16 kilohertz um, so I decided to inspect uh, the production sample drivers just to see uh, why they would measure differently and so um, you know I decided to check the screw torque and I found that both sample one and sample two had one screw only finger tight uh, and the other th three screws on each driver uh, were consistently torqued. Um, tightening the loose screw on each sample produced no change in the response of each driver. Um, I then looked at my pre-production sample to see if I could adjust the screw torque to match the response with production sample 2 and I could not achieve the same response uh, simply by adjusting the screw torque. Um, upon testing the production samples, I found inconsistency in the frequency response. One sample produced a much flatter response through the upper treble uh, compared to the other. Uh, listening to the flatter driver revealed a much improved sonic character. Uh, the treble was free of that, uh, quote, bite um, that I found with the pre-production sample. And um, so uh, directly comparing this golden sample against the RCF uh, ND350 revealed that the DH350 produced treble openness that rivaled the RCF. I suspect the new phase plug technology from BNC holds promise if they can resolve the driver to driver consistency. Uh, you may also be wondering if the issue may be related to the driver and horn alignment. So I decided to test uh, what the response would look like with a gross misalignment just uh, to put this concern at ease. And so here you can see um, the driver intentionally mounted uh, grossly misaligned and so I did a measurement response measurement uh, and here you can see the grossly misaligned driver is the red and then the uh, driver that's perfectly aligned is in the green and so there's really not much of a difference and it certainly wouldn't be uh, the reason for the difference between you know the production sample one and two um, so just to kind of uh, check and confirm that that's not an issue. So um, just to conclude this video, I'll keep updating you uh, as I continue to look at this new and innovative driver. So uh, there you have it, the BNC uh, DH350 from BNC.
Take care and have a great day.